Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska of the Blessed Sacrament was born as Helena Kowalska in Glogowick, Lechia County, northwest of Lodz in Poland, on August 25, 1905. She was the third of ten children to a poor and religious family. After her baptism in the nearby parish church of Swaniswarki, she was given the name Helena. During her childhood, she distinguished herself by acts of devotion, her love for prayer, hard work, obedience, and a tremendous sensitivity to human misery. Faustina first felt a calling to the religious life when she was just seven years old. Despite completing only three years of schooling, in her diary, she clearly described what she wanted to achieve in a simple, precise manner without any ambiguity. It was in the seventh year of my life, for the first time, I heard God's voice in my soul. That is, an invitation to a more perfect life. But I was not always obedient to the call to grace. I came across no one who would have explained these things to me. After finishing her schooling, Faustina went immediately to join a convent. Instead, at 16 years old, Faustina became a housekeeper to help her parents and support herself. At the age of 16, she left her family home for the nearby city of Alexandro and then moved to Lodz, where she worked as a servant to support herself and to help her parents. During this period, the desire to join a convent was gradually growing inside her. Since her parents were against it, young Helena tried to postpone God's call. Years later, she wrote about this in her book. Once I was at a dance with one of my sisters, and while everybody was having a good time, my soul was experiencing internal torments. As I began to dance, I suddenly saw Jesus at my side. Jesus racked with pain, stripped of his clothing, covered with wounds who spoke these words to me. How long shall I suffer, and how long will you keep deceiving me? At that moment, the charming music stopped, and any company vanished from my sight. There remained Jesus and I. I took a seat by my dear sister, pretending to have a headache to hide what had taken place in my soul. After a while, I slipped out unnoticed leaving my sister and all my companions behind, and made my way to the Cathedral of St. Stanislaus Kost. It was almost twilight. There was only a few people in the cathedral. Paying no attention to what had happened around me, I fell prostrate before the Blessed Sacrament and begged the Lord to be good enough to allow me to understand what I should do next. Then I heard these words, Go at once to Warsaw. You will enter a convent there. I rose from prayer, came home, and took care of things that needed to be settled. As best I could, I confided to my sister what took place within my soul. I told her to say goodbye to her parents, and thus, in one dress, with no other belongings, I arrived in Warsaw. When she arrived in Warsaw, she entered St. James Church in Warsaw, the first church she came across, and attended Mass. While in Warsaw, Faustina approached many different convents, but was turned away every time. She was judged on her appearances, and sometimes rejected for poverty. Finally, the Mother Superior for the Congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy decided to take in Faustina on the condition that she could pay for her own religious habit. Working as a housekeeper, Faustina began to save her money and make deposits to the convent. On April 30th, 1926, at 20 years old, she finally received her habit and took the religious name of Sister Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament. And in 1928, she took her first religious vows as a nun. In her diary, she described her feelings when joining the convent. It seemed to me that I had stepped into the life of paradise. 
A single prayer was bursting forth from my heart, one of thanksgiving. She was assigned to work in various houses of the congregation, spending the longest periods of time in Krakow, Plock, and Vilnius, working as a cook, gardener, and doorkeeper. Her rigorous lifestyle and exhausting fasting, which she was undertaking even before joining the congregation, weakened her body to a great extent. Soon after, she began to show the first signs of her illness and was sent away to rest. Several months later, Faustina returned to the convent. In 1931, Faustina was visited again by Lord Jesus. He presented himself as the King of Divine Mercy, wearing a white garment with red and pale rays coming from his heart. In her diary, Faustina wrote, In the evening, when I was in my cell, I became aware of the Lord Jesus clothed in a white garment. One hand was raised in blessing, the other was touching the garment at the breast. From the opening of the garment at the breast, there came forth two large rays, one red and the other pale. In silence, I gazed intently at the Lord. My soul was overwhelmed with fear, but also with great joy. After a while, Jesus said to me, Paint an image according to the pattern you see, with the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you. Even though she didn't know how to paint, St. Faustina attempted to sketch the vision of Christ with charcoal and canvas, but she didn't have much success. She turned to our Lord for help, and He told her that He would send her visible help with the task of creating the image. Shortly afterward, she was sent to a convent in Vilnius to work as a gardener. While at Vilnius, she met Father Michael Sapako, who had been recently appointed as a confessor for the nuns in the convent. He listened to Faustina's story about the vision of divine mercy and her desire to create an image of Christ. Father Sapako was concerned about Faustina. Father Sapako insisted she be evaluated by a psychiatrist. Faustina passed all of the required tests and was determined sane, leading Sapako to support her religious efforts. Sapako encouraged her to start keeping a diary and to record all of her conversations with Jesus. He then contacted the artist Eugene Kazimierowski, who painted the first image of divine mercy for St. Faustina. In the painting, Christ is shown raising his hand in blessing, while also pointing to the two rays that flow from his chest. One of the rays is red, which symbolizes the blood of Jesus. The white ray symbolizes the water that saves souls. The entire image brings to mind charity, forgiveness, and God's incredible love for his children. During the following year, Faustina attempted to set up a new congregation for divine mercy, but was reminded that she was perpetually vowed to her current order and sent back to Warsaw. Her entire life, in imitation of Christ's, was to be a sacrifice, a life lived for others. At the divine Lord's request, she willingly offered her personal sufferings in union with Him to atone for the sins of others. In her daily life, she was to become a doer of mercy, bringing joy and peace to others. And by writing about God's mercy, she was to encourage others to trust in Him and thus prepare the world for His coming again. In 1936, Faustina fell ill again. She moved to the sanatorium in Prodnik, Krakow, and continued to spend most of her life in prayer. Her special devotion to Mary Immaculate and to the sacraments of Eucharist and Reconciliation gave her the strength to bear all her sufferings as an offering to God on behalf of the Church and those in special need, especially great sinners 
and the dying. In 1937, the first holy cards with the Divine Mercy image were created, and Faustina provided instructions for the Novena of Divine Mercy, which she reported as a message from Jesus. Throughout the rest of 1937, the Divine Mercy image continued to be promoted and grow in popularity. During the final years of her life, her health deteriorated significantly. She developed tuberculosis, which attacked her lungs and gastrointestinal tract. As a result, she underwent two periods of hospital treatment, each lasting a few months. Physically ravaged, but spiritually entirely mature, being mystically united with God, she died in Krakow Lajwaniki on October 5, 1938, in the odor of sanctity, having lived for only 33 years, including 13 years of monastic life. The message of mercy that Sister Faustina received is now being spread throughout the world. Her diary, Divine Mercy in My Soul, has become the handbook for devotion to the Divine Mercy. After St. Faustina's death, the Divine Mercy devotion spread quickly. By 1951, over 150 religious centers dedicated to Divine Mercy could be found in Poland. Let me tell you the story of a unique and mysterious Eucharist miracle the saint experienced. In a passage dated in the late 1920s, she shares a number of fascinating stories about her personal encounters with Jesus Christ, both in apparitions and in the Eucharist. One amazing story stands out that took place while she was praying in her Covenants Chapel. One day Jesus said to me, I am going to leave this house because there are things here which displease me. Then, something strange happened. The Eucharist left the tabernacle on its own and flew to her. And the host came out of the tabernacle and came to rest in my hand. The Blessed Eucharist, which is Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity, had miraculously started moving around the room and landed in her hand. Was she scared? Confused? Well, here is how the saint responded. I, with joy, placed it back in the tabernacle. But the Eucharist kept moving. This was repeated a second time, and I did the same thing. Despite this, it happened a third time. After the third time, though, something new happened. The host was transformed into the living Lord Jesus, who said to me, I will stay here no longer. Now Jesus had told her twice that he wanted her to leave, and she has prevented him multiple times. After this second declaration, wouldn't you think a saint would relent? Not this saint. She confidently told our Lord that she just wouldn't let him leave the convent. She explains, At this, a powerful love for Jesus rose up in my soul. I answered, And I, I will not let you leave this house, Jesus. And again, Jesus disappeared while the host remained in my hands. Once again, I put it back in the chalice and closed it up in the tabernacle. This time, it was Jesus who relented. And Jesus stayed with us. But the Polish nun didn't leave it at that. Jesus had said he wanted to leave due to things here which displease me. So, in a very saintly manner, she took it on herself to try to atone for the problems. And that's all she says about the encounter. What an incredible story of a wonderfully personal and intimate encounter with our Lord. St. Faustina Kowalska was beatified on April 18, 1993, and canonized on April 30, 2000, both by Pope St. John Paul II. Her feast day is celebrated on October 5th, and she is the patron saint of mercy.